I feel wealthier already. Do you love the birds? I love the birds. I feel so... I just feel the economic boom happening in my life <laughs> with the birds. The birds and data. How could birds and data and uh, me making more money, how do, all, how do all of those come together? Well, there's a study. Let's talk about a little December bit. December 2020. <laughs> Let's talk about the reach. Here. Headline, birds increase human happiness, study finds. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Um, I just want to, I want to lay this out. Where do birds typically sit? Anywhere where they can have safety and comfort. Natural areas. Yes. Calm, peaceful. Birds aren't going to sit around war zones. No. Birds don't like being in cities unless you're a pigeon. Right. Okay. They go to areas where there's beauty, color, serenity, you know, um, harmony. Yes. Obviously, life is going to be better where the birds are. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. And okay. this is what the study came up this with. This is great. Listen, the number of bird species in a person's surroundings correlates to happiness. Mm -hmm. According to a new quality of life study, more than 26,000 adults from 26 European countries saying if you add 10% more bird species to a uh, vincini, increases the life satisfaction of Europeans at least as much as comparable to an increase in income. Can we, all right. So let's look at the culture of Europeans. So typically the wealthy aristocratic ones are the ones that had the big gardens. Mm -hmm. And you know, oh, it's about 11 o'clock just after tea. Let's go for a stroll because that's what we do in our nice gardens. Well, what happens when you have a big, beautiful, well-maintained garden? Right. Well, the birds want to hang out there. They don't want to hang out in a busted old birdhouse. You know? They want to sit on a branch chirping up. There's a lot of opportunity for biodiversity and food. So... When I look at this data and happiness, well, I feel good walking through these na natural areas. The birds are going to be more happy about it. And if there's a diversity of birds, that means there's, there's a diversity of food and sustenance and environment for them to be in. Right. Yeah, and it said nature uh, conservation thus constitutes investment in human well-being. Well, think about, you know, nice gardens and stuff and the ability to take time to be out there. Typically, people that have, you know, more funds can afford themselves more time to be out in nature mm -hmm. like that. Um, right? Yeah. And it said this under this current pandemic conditions, activities out of nature are a popular pastime. Yeah. The beneficial effects of a diverse nature on people's mental health have already been documented by studies on a smaller scale. Yeah. And scientists of the Skettenberg Gelschaffer Neuschaffung. <laughs> Your German's terrible, but uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> the University of Kiel. Yeah. Was, uh, he said, now examine for the first time whether a diverse nature also increases human well-being across the continent. Well, if you're happy, right, if you feel good, you're going to work harder and better, right? Yes. So through the systemic effects of your enjoyment and your emotional state, that's going to carry over into work. So isn't that probably going to raise the average value or amount of money people are receiving because they're, they're enjoying what they're doing? They're willing to work more? Yeah, but I mean, as if we look at the data. Correlation's right? interesting. Yeah, here. correlation, I, I think, is that if we have a diversity of species in our surrounding areas and in our life, happiness and satisfaction correlate because we're not going against nature. No, we're working with nature. We're, being, we're closer to being ourselves. Yes, Right? Yeah. So the correlation makes a heck of a lot of sense. And frankly, this thing seems quite obvious. If, you know, I had read some literature some time ago that there are two things that are genetically built into human beings that we never, we never do not pick up on. One is the sound of a bird. Mm -hmm. No matter what, no matter how much chaos is going on, your mind always picks up on a bird's, a bird's song. Yes. And the second thing is a sunrise or a sunset. No matter how hard we try, we're so naturally drawn to bring ourselves over and watch that golden orange yes. sun or red hit the, you know, the horizon line. Those are two very specific things. And so I think the bird is quite interesting in terms of, you know, when there's a lot of birds, it's, it's connecting with us at a very deep level. So I can understand that that quality of life is going to increase you know, as a correlation to having more of that biodiversity. Yeah, and they talked about, you know, the song and listening to the bird, even if it's not visible. That's what, what I'm saying. Can, does Remember I told mentally, you? I don't yes. have to look at the bird. Right. I said it's a deep, deep, innate thing within it's us. It's a song. 
Yeah, that we connect it, with. It's, it's exuding data. It's nature's music. Yes. The but bird's creating data. Yeah, that, but there's a second aspect about how life satisfaction is the surroundings. So a particularly high number of bird species can be found in areas with a high proportion of near natural and diverse landscapes. So that's numerous green spaces and bodies of water. So if you go into the wealthier parts of cities, right? what do they typically have? Oh, more green space, more yeah, parks, parks right. more diversity. So obviously you're going to find higher incomes and a higher correlation with quality of life around these places that are more akin to having a higher biodiversity of animals. So the investment in parks, the investment in our, um, you know, our uh, forests, the investment in the green spaces that we have in each of these countries yeah. um, is going to be a correlation to us living a better life. Yeah, it's not the, the bird does not, right. the bird does not make us more money. The bird does not make us happier. It's how we choose to live with these things and interact with them. That's what drives the, you know, the correlation is great, but that's like a secondary factor to really, you know, what's going on here. It's how we're choosing to live. Yeah. And the part that got me more than anything, I think is the, uh, and at the end of the article, they talked about this, the global assessment by the world biodiversity council uh, in the study of avian species in agricultural landscapes. And that it's, they, and they use the words, a dramatic decline. Yeah. So, so our agricultural aspects and the way that we're doing things and how it's harming the bees and, and the birds. Well, monocropping already destroys biodiversity in general. Yes. Just do miles and miles and mi endless miles of corn. Right. Or soy or wheat. But there's no blend of it. So if you're going across Texas, I don't know if you've ever driven across Texas, you know, you'll see one specific species of bird that'll like just choose to hang out there. Not... 15 different species. Right. And that's, you know, that's a real bummer is that we're not paying attention to the data that's showing us this. And because of things like climate change, bird migratory patterns are going all over. They're all over the place. And, you know, because of smoke from the forest fires, it's, you know, destroying the lungs of these tiny little birds and they're dropping dead all over the place. Go down well, to White Sands, New Mexico. Yes. Why do we have all these birds dropping dead? Yeah. And whether you're liberal, conservative, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. We have... They've already proven this. We have no bees. We have no birds. We have no life. Yeah, you got no life. You, you start crippling that system. It affects us all regardless. It is fragile. It is fragile. And we think it's like something so robust, but the earth is in like defensive mechanism mode. Yes. And so if you want to feel good about your parks and everything and increase that biodiversity, it's time to pay attention to the bird data. Yeah, and just like our bodies, it's inflamed. Yeah, pay attention. It's chronic inflammation. Yeah, you're not listening to the song. No, you know. 